Hey, what's going on everyone? Nary Rodriguez here. Welcome to the Garden Statement. Week 6, we're losing track of the days here. We have a lot of exciting games to preview, as well as our interviews coming up later on in the show. But before we do that, we jump back to last Friday night, where we had an exciting Big Central Conference matchup between Phillipsburg and West Orange. This rematch of the 2022 North Group 5 Final did not disappoint. First quarter, West Orange going to punt, or so they thought, until Felix Mato scoops up this block punt. Good luck catching him, and it's a 17-yard scoop and score for Peberg to take an early 7-0 lead in the first. Oh, but the defense wasn't done. Second quarter, Bucknell commit Charlie Lamorte's pass going to be picked off by Matt Scarebo Jr. Fresh cookies. Scarebo cutting them up like an iron chef. Is that a Euro step? I don't know. I'm not from Europe. He takes it 35 yards to the crib. And look out. State liners up 14-0 on the road. West Orange would get a touchdown on the board before halftime, and we stay at that score heading into the fourth, but the third quarter, no shortage of hard hits as Phillipsburg continuing to set the tone all night long. Finally, in the fourth quarter, they get a little padding as Jet Genovese runs in for the three-yard touchdown. That's his third rushing score of the season, and in the fourth, Phillipsburg up 21-7. West Orange not going away though. Mountaineers marching downfield in the closing moments of the fourth. They get a break as Farad Green catches this pass from Charlie Lamorte to cut it to 21-14. They hold off Phillipsburg on defense for a potential game tying or winning drive. However, the ensuing punt attempt going to be fumbled. p -Bird recovers. And that's how this one will end. 21-14 your final. Phillipsburg exacts revenge from that 2022 title game as they pull out this exciting upset road victory. Terrell Wilfong still eating in this one for the Mountaineers as he finished with 11 grabs for 121 yards. However, Peberg handled business where it really meant as they keep the Syracuse commit off the board. And just a great performance from this Phillipsburg team that was upset just a few weeks earlier by rival Ridge. They may be undersized compared to teams in recent memory, but this group of state liners playing huge. How about senior Felix Matos who got this thing jumping with a block punt return for a touchdown? He'll finish with a fumble recovery, an interception, a scoop and score, as well as a blocked kick. Matt Scarbo Jr., who would leave the game with an injury, had that incredible pick six that was a real momentum booster for Phillipsburg. And quarterback Jet Genovese holding it down for Peberg late in the second half, as he's done all year long. They've definitely re-raised some eyebrows in the Big Central Conference as they improved to 4-1. and one. West Orange will look to go back to the drawing board as the Mountaineers fall to 4-2. and two. Afterwards, we caught up with Jet Genovese and Phillipsburg head coach Frank Duffy. I'm here with the Jet Genovese. <laughs> Tell me, how's Philly get this big win over West Orange? Uh, it feels great. You know, um, you know, they came in two years ago and beat us, and you know, to finally get beat these guys, you know, they wanted to play us. So, you know, we had a mentality all week that we were going to win this game. We never doubted it. You know, I talked to the guys yesterday. This is part of the process. We want to win that Group Four state title, but this is just one step closer to that. You know, we're already on the next week. 21 to 14. If I would have told you you would have only had one offensive touchdown and won this game this morning when you woke up, what would you have said to that? I mean, just win. That's all we needed to do. We had to find a way to win, and we got the way, we got the job done. That's all that mattered. We won the game, and you know, so W in the win column. That's what that's what really matters. So, we're excited about this game. You know, we were excited for. You know, we had a lot of adversity in this game. A lot of our guys went down. So, um, you know, it's the next man mentality, and you know. Really proud of the way our guys fought and you know handled this adversity in this hostile environment. All right, I'm here with Phillipsburg head coach Frank Duffy. Tell me, how's Phil get this awesome road win over West Orange? It feels great. This is an outstanding program, and um, our guys really stepped up. Uh, our kicking game, we had a, uh, a recovery there at the end to seal the deal, and, and a, a block punt with Felix Matos to score a touchdown. And, uh, the pick six, you know, we didn't score any offensive points in the first half, but it was it was a 14-7 ball game, so it was really nice to see other facets of our game step up other than our offense. Our offense has been the one generating the points the most for the most of the season. Now we just needed help from other areas of, the, of our team. The last time you guys met, that's so far in the past, so, you know, mm -hmm. it was the state championship game. 
Um, you know, and coming in here, I heard one of your coaches say, he's like, you know, we saw seven on seven highlights. We don't even play seven on seven. We're just here to play yeah. team football. So, you know, what was it like prepping for this team? And, you know, was there a little, you know, something kind of left from that? Uh, that it was it was a heightened level of, of focus and energy. I mean, this is a good football team. This is the most athletic team we've seen. You know, and we, we just knew we, we had to just play our brand of football. We got to get the one game going. And at times we were able to do that. We, we stalled out a little bit offensively. And just like last week when defense was struggling, offense stepped up, you got to be able to play complimentary football. So when you have one side of the football stolen out, the other sides of the football have to step up. That's what we saw tonight. And on Saturday, the place you wanted to be, Pope John at Del Barton. We were in the building for one of the best games of the year, and Tyleek Hill putting the green wave on their heels early as he starts this one with two rushing touchdowns. Del Barton finally getting on the board in the second quarter following a two-yard touchdown run from Buffalo commit Philip Fomar. They cut it to 14-7, but one of the biggest moments of the game coming off the foot of Will Kramer. The senior from 49 yards out, let's face it, it was really 50. Either way, he knocks it through. One of the best field goals you'll see this year, one, and we'll revisit that statement in a bit, but that had the homecoming crowd jumping. And before you know it, Del Barton striking again just before halftime as Matt Tafori gets in for a 37 yard touchdown. They lead Pope John 17-14 at the break. And the second half of this one straight up crazy. Tyleek Hill, how about another rushing touchdown? His third of the game. This one comes from 11 yards out to make it 21-17. And just when it seems like the tides are shifting, Del Barton back in the game with a huge safety to cut it to 21-19. Both teams trade touchdowns to end the third quarter. And Pope John, 12 minutes away from getting their second win of the year in upset fashion. But you have to stop Delby first. Matt Tafori, how about another? This time from 85 yards out. And look out, Green Wave up 32-28 in the fourth. And you thought that was the end? Guess again. Later, Wes Johnston from 23 yards out. I'm in here too. Lions retake the lead 34-32. However, the moment of the game coming with just 19 seconds left. Del Barton doing a good job of moving down the field with under a minute to go. And soon after, Will Kramer will attempt his second field goal of the day. This one from just 27 yards out, but it's for everything. Kramer, the state championship golfer. It's good! Will Kramer on homecoming with possibly the most memorable Del Barton win in history. 35-34 your final. What a way to improve to 5-1 on the year. Last year's runner-up in the non-public A final keeping folks on notice as they find a way to win in one of their less prominent showings this year. After graduating a talented group last year, they have surprised some folks and still should be considered one of the top threats in non-public A. And they have a gauntlet of a remaining schedule as they will take on number one Bergen Catholic and then number two DePaul before finishing up with Paramus Catholic. All three of those matchups, movies. And I want to give a special shout out to Pope John as they drop to one and four. The record not telling the entire story as their losses come against some of the state's top teams in Bergen Catholic and DePaul. Tyleek Hill finishing this one with 243 rushing yards and three touchdowns. They'll look to jump back in the win column against Seton Hall Prep, who just fell to St. Peter's Prep. After the pandemonium, we caught up with Del Barton head coach Brian Bowers. All right, I'm here with an elated coach, Brian Bowers. Tell me, how does it feel to get this exciting homecoming win over Pope John? <laughs> I'm relieved. I'm relieved because, you know what, we had to pull, we had to dig down uh, deep. Uh, we had to rely on our special teams. Uh, we had to rely on, you know, offense moving the ball in the, in, to make a last minute drive. We had to rely on our defense to have a big fourth down stop. So it's a team game. I honestly knew that Pope John was going to give us a great game. You know, our theme in the beginning of the year was find a way. And today we had to find a way. And uh, I'm proud of the boys to, you know, kind of dig down and get that win. And take me through that kick and what, oh, what was going through your You know mind. what? I Honestly, I had a lot of confidence. You know, Will Kramer is one of the best kickers we ever had. He's college-level kicker. He's going to go kick 
uh, Williams College, and you know he's he's been he's been in pressure situations. He also welcomes pressure situations. Number one golfer golfer on our golf team, and he was the one that won the, the tournament of champions last year. And so here's a kid who's used to pressure. He thrives under pressure. So um, I had no problem putting him out to kick a 50-yard field goal. And then at the end of the game, we just said let's let's kick it and uh, take our chances with Will Kramer, and he rewarded us for that. What more could you want? Game-winning field goals, homecoming, heartwarming stuff. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to catch up with Will Kramer with all the madness going on, but luckily we do have an interview with him coming up on the Garden Statement, as well as two Stanford commits hailing from Hun and Cole Breeler and Liam Thorpe. Let's check those out. All right, I'm here with the green leg, Will Kramer, who just kicked Del Barton to an exciting 35-34 win over Pope John. Will, welcome to the show. What's going on? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we were just talking here a little bit before we got going, and that was some win over Pope John. They put up a, you know, they put up a big fight. You guys probably should have had a lopsided win over them, but they really fought till the very end just take us through this game and just you know the emotions and just every everything from your perspective yeah so uh that game um i've been to a lot of homecomings i've been at del barnes in seventh grade and that for sure will be uh the homecoming i will remember the most um so that that game was really cool i from the start it was uh you know emotions were high we had a lot of people in attendance um, it had, I think someone said today it was like the most attended homecoming in the past, like 10 years, you know, cause after coming off a great season last year, uh, people have high expectations for us. So we got a lot, a lot of alumni coming back. So like, you know, the pressure was on for us to put up a show for our school and, um, we started off slow. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, I think we kind of started to hit our stride offensively, um, starting the second quarter. And then we kind of just, uh, I think we. They got when we came back at a uh, half. I think we wanted it more than them, um, even though like third quarter kind of was a little slow for us. But uh, we really wanted to win for our school. And you, you were spectacular. You know, they called it a forty-nine yard field goal. It was really fifty. All right, I'm just gonna give yeah. it straight up fifty. It was, it was insane. Uh, I've seen that two other times, but you know, you painted the picture so well. That atmosphere. It's homecoming. And, you know, if you've never been to a Del Barton homecoming, it's pretty sick the way they uh, they make that tunnel for the players. And yeah, you guys had a crazy attendance, but you made that 50 yarder and the place went absolutely nuts. Um, talk about talk about that. And when, when you saw that go through the uprights. Yeah. So, like, I'd say like that whole like 50 yarder thing, that's been a goal for mine. Uh, since the really like since I since January, I've been putting a lot of work and because um, last year during the semifinals against Bosco, I attempted a like a 51 or 52 yarder and I missed it wide. And I was just really the whole offseason was like looking back at that one kick and being like, I want to hit a 50 yarder this year. That was my goal. And um, it really started in practice. You know, you, you know, in high school, not many kickers. Now, usually coaches don't let their kickers kick past 35 yards, so you have to prove it in practice. And uh, I think, like, my kicking coach, Ross Martin, who's been a great addition to our program, who played at Duke, he played in the NFL, um, he's kind of, like, a lot – like, he's he's helped my game a lot, and um, he's helped my confidence and Coach Bowers' confidence in me. So we worked a lot in, the, in June, uh, July, August, September – uh, really working at like uh, getting our operation down from deep because it could be a really big turning point in games. You know, it could be a big confidence booster for our team. And uh, they, uh, Coach Martin, um, he asked me if I was good from here, and I was like, of course. I've been working all all season uh, to kick from that range, and uh, I got out there. They called a timeout. Honestly, could probably helped me, and um, I visualized the kick, and I hit it, and it was, it was pretty cool. It sure was. And, you know, Coach Bowers after the game singing your praises immediately when I asked him, you know, asked him what was going through his mind during that moment. And he had complete confidence in you. And he mentioned that you welcome moments like that. So just kind of 
speak to that. And, you know, I know you're a multi-sport athlete. Just speak to that competitive nature and wanting that moment as opposed to be putting, as opposed to be putting, you know, kind of in that moment. Yeah. So uh, that moment, you know, like being in a game winning scenario, that's something I've been like dreaming about, you know, like getting in the car and driving to school and like listening to music and really just thinking about like a moment like that to win homecoming in my senior year. That's a pretty special thing. And um, I really like it really started to hit me that I was going to be in that situation when we got to safety. And then uh, when my teammate Nick Stoll uh, blocked an, an extra point, which allowed us to have like a uh, go big or go home field goal attempt. And he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, I blocked this so you can have your moment. And um, that, that I really took that to heart. And uh, when I went out there, I had every confidence that my team believed me. And um, I kind of learned how to, how to deal with the pressure, playing golf, um, playing a state championship. Um, and last year, kicking an extra point to force overtime against St. Peter's. Um, so uh, basically, I'm used to it. And um, I think it's, uh, I yeah, it was a surreal moment for uh, me and my family. That's awesome. And we're definitely going to have to touch on on the golf because that's that's pretty sick. Before we go any further, you know, we're all visual learners here, so. Let's run it back real quick because I'm sure you haven't gotten enough of watching this. So just kind of, you know, take us through this one in terms of just what's kind of going through your mind. Do you, can you believe you got the celebration down perfect, by the way? Um, yeah. Just kind of just kind of take us through uh, the moment. Did you watch it go in the whole way or did you kind of, you know, yeah so uh so like a little advice like really what's going through my head absolutely nothing like um it was really an all all blur but i i don't remember thinking anything in my brain just going out there and making a kick because the moment you start thinking about stuff the moment you get nervous and you start to doubt yourself so i didn't let my brain like turn on in a way and um i kind of just went out there and executed you know at 27 yards is not like a long field goal by any means, but in a situation like that, it's all mental. It's really not skill wise. It's either you're going to, you have a killer mindset going out there or you don't and you're going to miss. So I just kind of just ignored it and just went out there and just, you know, kicked the field goal. That's awesome, man. And we'll, we'll run the 50 over because we got you here. <laughs> I love the film you have with Coach. Um, I know obviously the game winner's got to feel good, and we just kind of went over the 50 yarder. But can you believe you had both those moments in the same game? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, because last week I never kicked two field goals in a game until last week in Seton Hall. So, like, I feel like that was a good exposure to kicking two field goals in a game. So, like, that got me pretty prepared for uh, that game and um, really just got to think about it in like one kick at a time. You can't really think about it in like a, like a sense like, oh, I got to make this. And then, oh, I got to kick another kick after this. You got to say like, I got this kick here and then whatever happens, happens after. Um, so you got to have like this play mindset, which is something our, our program really emphasizes. And uh, that really helped me with my mental game. Um, kicking in the past three weeks, I've been doing pretty well and I hopefully I can finish the season out pretty well too. Yeah, we sure hope to see you guys there at the end. You're all like I said, you're off to a five and one start. Um, just talk about, you know, you you come up short in the state championship last year, and usually, well, you know, sometimes when that happens, teams don't bounce back as strong as the year before. And, you know, I'd be lying if I if I uh said I wasn't a little surprised, but you know, I've been keeping up with you guys. It was great to see you in person finally. What's just you know, what's the difference? Besides talent, you know, you don't have people like Ryan Trafford, but what's the difference from last year's team to this year's team? And why do you think you guys so far were able to kind of bridge that gap? Yeah, so the difference between last year, I mean, last year was my first year playing football. So I really got expo exposed to a whole like football uh, team thing it was amazing. And that team forever will be dear in my heart. I love those those guys. Uh, but really, like this year, I think like 
or last year it was like a huge year for us. That was kind of like our um, big coming out party. You know, we came, we were a strong program now. And uh, I think we're recognized as a strong program in the state up there with the likes of Bergen, Bosco, uh, Joe's and DePaul. And we kind of proved ourselves. And uh, I think the, this year was a real, a real uh, testament to how we're going to respond back to that. Um, and uh, our whole emphasis was carry over the momentum we had last year. And um, really, if you look at our season last year, it's pretty, pretty dang similar to this year. We start off playing the out of state team against New York and um, we ended up blowing both of them out. Then we played Malvern. Um, we were up point, like we we're up uh, multiple possessions against them going into the second half. We ended up losing, but it was a really, um, I guess you can say a crucial loss kind of like brought us together and um, recognize like our mistakes as a team. And uh, since then we've gone 4-0 um, and I think it's helped our team um, to really stick together. And um, I think, I truly think we're the best, like if you think of like overall team, I think we're the best team in the state. Um, like, you know, these guys, our guys love each other. Uh, we trust each other to death. Um, our coaches are amazing. Um, really just like the emphasis of teamwork um, and carrying the momentum we made last year has been a real, real thing for us. And I think it's worked out for us pretty well. For sure. And, you know, with North Jersey football, there's so many great programs to choose from. You know, to the Del Bartons, uh, you know, to the Bergens, Don Bosco, Seton Hall, St. Peter's Prep, you know, the list goes on. What is it about playing at Del Barton that you think, you know, gravitates people to just, you know, to want to play there? And what's the tradition like playing there? Yeah. So, uh, really, I think Del Barton's like a very unique school. Like, uh, a lot of these kids, um, I, I, I truly love all these kids and um uh the student section's amazing the whole alumni the, the community is so supportive um and i think like our tradition as a football team um i think we kind of created like a successful tradition over, over of course like over time we have but yesterday i think we really made our or last year we really made our mark um and i just remember playing uh games against st joe's DePaul. Don Bosco and Seen Hall last year and playing at Del Barton. And I'll tell you that 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 feels really hard to play in deep down in October and November with the student section going crazy and the wind um, blowing over the mountain. And um, I'll tell you, as a kicker, it's very hard. Um, and throwing the football is also very hard. And it's very hard to play in, as an opposing team there. You know, the crowd was crazy. We got the Vuvuzelas. Um, and it's truly a fun experience. And um, I think like our our uh, facilities have been amazing too. Um, big thanks to the uh, Delbrine Athletics for uh, uh, making those great facilities. Um, and I just think like this program's going in a great direction. Really do. Yeah, and that's a test to all the great coaches on you know on your on the Del Barton staff. Shout out to all those guys and just the school as a whole. Always showing love. Um, but you know, Coach Bowers, you know, he's he's a very unique guy. He's I wouldn't yeah, he's one of those coaches that, you know, even when we're done with the interview, I got to at least chalk it up a, lo a little bit with him. So just talk about playing for him and, you know, just what kind of coach and man he is. Yeah, Coach Bowers is he's a really good coach, you know. I really appreciate him. Um, and I think like he's what makes him a great coach is being open to listening to you and other coaches about like certain things, um, about like what the strategy and game is, you know, and special teams has, has been a really crucial thing for us, um, over the past two years. And with the addition of our, um, coach, uh, coach Martin, coach Ross Martin, who, uh, like I said, uh, played in the NFL and he's got great insight in the game and, uh, he's kind of like, um he's helped out our special teams game a lot you know we got we're very we can we can really do anything on special teams and um and coach martin's been really open to that and he's been very open to letting me kick long field goals and this year we've already attempted nine field goals in six games um so our field goal units definitely became a big part of our offense and that was something I wouldn't really think would happen maybe last year in the middle of the season or maybe in the offseason. I didn't know how many field goals we attempt, but 
he really is open to uh, me letting um, or letting me use my leg a lot, which is really cool. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but believe it or not, people, football is not even his best sport. You are a world class golfer, right? You're coming off the tournament of champions win, correct? Congrats yeah. to you, brother. That is amazing. Um, tell me the obviously there's big differences with golf and football. You're not uh, sometimes running for your life in golf. Um, but just talk about the differences and I guess uh, joy, satisfaction and that you get from each sport and maybe things that you bring along from both sports to, you know, yeah, and or football. Yeah. So last year I joined um, the football team in August. I was a pretty uh, late player um, or a late addition to the team. And I don't think the sports are different by any means. I mean, when you, when people, when you ask NFL kickers about uh, what makes a good kicker, it's, or even like my coach who played in the NFL, every kicker has good technique. That's not what distinguishes um, each one from the rest. It's their mental game. Their mental game is how they, how they do well in games, how many field goals they make, how confident they are. And when, when I started out the season last year, uh, my mental game was very good because of golf. I played in like pretty, pretty uh, high, high state golf tournaments in high school and, and, and out of high school and like the Met Junior. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but it's like the biggest junior golf tournament in uh, the tri-state area. And um, I did really bad in it, but I learned a lot and applied it to football. And um, I made game time extra point, which is kind of big in a high stakes scenario and uh, made plenty of field goals that year. And I really used what I learned from golf mentally and applied it to football. And I, I can tell you my technique in kicking isn't like that great. Like my, can my mechanics aren't special, but I think what makes me special and my kicking ability is my mindset when going out in the field. And I think that I take a lot of that from golf. That's incredible. Uh, real quick before you go, can you just, just talk about how did you wind up on the football team? Did you play football team? I mean, did you play football when you were younger? Uh, did you play soccer? Like what led up to you, uh, you know, kind of getting on the football team there? Yeah, so uh, it's kind of a funny story. So it was like August something. It was like August 8th last year. And uh, my best friend, Peter Danini, shout out to him. He, uh, well, I've always been kicking like for fun with him, like at like our local field and summit. And so it was just like one day where we like played soccer after he had a football practice and I was just kicking the ball and he, he really like wanted me to join the football team. And um, I had, it was after that bad tournament I, I was talking about. And I was really thinking about it because like I want to play college golf, but then that ended up not happening. And I kind of got really down about it. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just try a team sport for a chance, you know, because I never played a team sport. And um, I really think you can learn a lot from team sports. So I was like, hey, why not try out for a kicker? You know, it's something I could, I think I'll be good at. And um, he got me to try out and I showed up to my tryout in like sneakers. And it was just like, I, I did well, but like, I really did not know what I was doing. And I kind of just like played like went to practice, but couldn't even play in the scrimmage because I wasn't eligible yet. And then I played at St. Anthony's and we did well. And then Malvern and then St. Peter's. So it was kind of a funny story. It goes around my family a lot and others. Um, and it's kind of ironic because like last year, it was basically a year, year and two months ago. I did not know where I was going to college. I think I was applying, but now I'm in college for football. So like it really changed, changed my life. So it was kind of cool. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Now now look at you. You're about to go play college football, so it all worked out. Uh, Will, before I let you go, uh, do you have any parting words, and what does the rest of the state need to know about Del Barton this year? So I have a lot of shouts to make. You know, shout out to my whole, Patri or my whole field goal unit. Shout out to Charlie Handel, best long snap in the state, and Matty O'Leary, best holder in the state. Couldn't be doing it without them. And um, the shout out to the whole O line unit uh, for making good blocks. Uh, and I think Delbarn football, you know, 
we're coming up on Bergen, DePaul, you know, very premier teams in the country. And um, and guess what? Bergen plays us at home in two weeks. And I'll tell you, like I said earlier, playing at William O'Regan Field in October is a pretty hard thing to do. So I think we'll have a we have a good chance of beating them. And we should be we should be feared. We should not be underestimated. I'll tell you that. Last year didn't work too well for many teams. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, and I appreciate that sentiment. Uh, you have no idea. Love people keep it real. But, um, you know, take care. Uh, you know, congrats on everything. And, um, you know, we'll be seeing you guys soon. Thank you very much. For the first time in show history, two guests, both of them very special to me. Let's welcome in Hun Athletes and Stanford Commits, Liam Thorpe and Cole Breeler. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah. Having us on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys know we go way back. I uh, haven't been out to see you in person yet, but you're killing it. You're representing Jersey well. Uh, very proud of both of you. Tell me, Hun Raiders off to a 6-0 and start. What's the vibes been like so far early on in the season? I mean, it's been great. This is our first time, you know, playing national schedule, playing flying. We flew to Chicago. We flew to Georgia. Um, we've only played one game in New Jersey so far. So it took a little bit of adjusting, you know, getting on that plane, going to Chicago. Um, but the vibes have been amazing. I mean, the brotherhood that we've created has just forged us to these amazing wins. We had our uh, overtime win. We had the game-winning drive um, in Chicago. And, yeah, I mean, it's just been a great season so far. Yeah, I know. I think it's uh... – it's just uh, we've become a family, so it's just everybody's bought in. Everybody's got each other's backs. And, you know, we've gone up against some great talent, but what we have, what a lot of teams don't, is, you know, we just have this really strong togetherness that uh, helped us out so much. Absolutely. And, you know, Hun, very special place to play. You know, it takes a certain type of football player to want to go there. The crowds might not be as big as some of these other high school games, but, you know, the recognition you get and you're literally taking on the top talent in now in the country, not even in the state. Just talk about the competitiveness, uh, what it takes to play a hun and just how you guys don't run away from competition now that you're playing a national schedule. Yeah, I think what it is at hun is, you know, the practice, you want to make practice harder than the game. So I'm going up against uh, all sorts of talent in practice, which makes it so much easier for me in the game, you know. When you come to hunt, you're going to be competing all day in practice. It's it's not easy, but um, it gets you ready for sure. Yeah, and I would also say just being around a group of guys who are like-minded and want to work hard, um, it pushes you to be better. And um, when you're put, like I'm put with Jack Moran, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, um, it just elevates my game even further. So when you're in a room with a bunch of talented guys, I think it makes you much better and it pushes you to um, become a better player and prepare you for college. Yeah, and if you're – I mean, if you're a, a high school football player, this is the <laughs> – this is the college maker, I call it. Um, you know, they, they'll – you know, they always find a way to place you on some team. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I know you guys pretty well. I could have invited on probably 10 more people. Uh, that's how many studs you guys have and just – you know, the relationships I've been fortunate enough to build uh, from Bryce Kania to, you know, Kamara Archie, he said, um, you know, Jack Moran. Uh, and, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, just talk about this cast that you guys got. And, you know, just yeah, just just talk about the 2024 Hun cast. Yeah, I just want to start off by shouting out my D-line, uh, Griffin Galetta, Luke Wafel, Seth Clark, you know, Greg Thomas. Um, just absolute dogs. I mean, we go get after it every day. And, you know, I think we're just – that D-line standpoint, we're just loaded. And the guys come in, they work so hard and just give it give it their all in practice. And we're definitely making the O-line work every day. Yeah, I mean, it takes a certain type of guy to be able to play at Hunt and fit in with the tradition. Um, as you said, we don't really have all the fans, nothing showy. We're just straight ball. And um, all the guys that come are dogs. And um, we develop guys and our class in particular, we've really developed some of our guys. Um, some people have the notion about Hun 
that it's just a PG school and we're a new team every year. We get new guys coming from all different places. And um, I feel like that's not really true. We do get some new guys every each year, but we handpick the guys that we want that we think will fit into our program and buy into what we're doing. And I would say our class in particular has been built on kids like Cole and I, Jack Moran, Bryce Kenya, Kamar Archie, guys that have been there for three to four years and have just sort of developed throughout the program and become the players we are today. Yeah, for sure. And I remember Kamar switching, you know, coming over from Ewing, then starting at Hun, and to see his career flourish is just, you know, a testament to all you guys and how, um, you know, it's hard to just pick one star player on the team. You guys complement each other so well that it literally feels like a an all star or you know a super team put together. Um, let's let's talk about the coaching a little bit. All right, you got a you got a bunch of hitters around around the horn too. Um, but let's start with Coach Todd Smith. What do you think? Um, let me think of how I'm going to put this. What is, what does Coach Smith do to really just get the like the best and the most out of all his players? Um, I think like Cole was saying before, it starts with practice. I mean, our practices are so intense. We move through periods super quickly. It's almost like a college practice. And I think this is the biggest thing with Coach Smith. He's always pushing us and he'll chew you out if you do something wrong. But then at the end of practice, he'll tell you he loves you. And um, he has the saying, next play, best play. And so when he chews you out, you know what you did wrong and how you're going to fix it. And then next play, you're going to go out there and fix it, do it right, and um, be the great players we are. So I think Coach Smith has a really good philosophy in how he coaches us and how he he's able to develop us into these players. Yeah, like Liam said, man, Coach Smith, he's just so hard on us, but at the same time, he loves us so much. Um, he's not afraid to, yeah, chew you out in practice, but at the same time, he preaches um, – you know, this, these values of brotherhood and family, you know, he'll have us over to the house, watch football, have us over to have some dinner. And, you know, he's just, aside from a coach, he's just a great guy. And I think the fact that he takes personal relationships so seriously, you know, he cares about each and every one of his players, even, you know, just the scout guys. So, I mean, he just has created such a well-rounded team just by, you know, his personality and how he, how he coaches. Definitely one of my favorite guys to deal with, and he's, you know, he's he's a football fan. Um, you know, we've had a lot of great conversations um, about the game on the field, off things of that nature. Um, Liam, we're gonna get we're gonna get to you because uh, you got all the fancy stats. Cole, I know you're in the trenches, man. You're you've been a leader since you've been with Hun, uh, offense and defense. Just you know, in this world of seven on seven. Just kind of take us through, um, you know, just the the camaraderie and and just th- and just things of that nature with with those uh you know, those quote unquote big uglies on the offensive and defensive line in this era of seven on seven. Well, I mean, um, we got a we got a great group of skills, and um, but none of that's possible without the guys in the trenches who are blocking for us and allowing us to make these plays. Um, so I would say that they, it starts in the O-line. It starts in the trenches. I got guys like Cole blocking for me so we could throw a 50 yard post with five seconds of protection. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, got a great quarterback, got great receivers around me. So it's not like we, we spread the ball around. Um, and yeah, when you're putting on a team with a lot of guys that can play, it just, it makes it so much easier to be really good. Yeah, I mean, I got kind of thrown headfirst in the O-line. I didn't know what I was doing. My my sophomore year is my first year playing O-line. But, I mean, similarly to D-line, it's just if you want to go hit someone, you're going to do good. So um, as long as that our O-line, our D-line has that same mentality of just being dogs and just being nasty, like uh, it's no problem, whoever we face. Absolutely. Now, like I said, get getting into the, you know, some skill stats. Liam, you're off to a great season, man, already. You know, I believe you got six touchdowns uh, and you're, you know, you're on pace to break that that 1000 receiving yard mark. You're at. Let me see what you're at. Uh, yeah, you're at 710. Um, and 
you know, I know you play a lot of different positions. And for people who don't know, kick, kick could really kick the ball. All right. <laughs> I, remember, I remember talking to your dad. That was the best. Um, you you kick you you kick one. Um, you know, it's a touchback, and he looks to me and he goes, "You know, he hates kicking, but he's so good at it that they make him do it." I was like, "That's a good problem to have." Yeah. Um, but yeah, Liam, just talk a little bit about your, your play so far this year, man. Six touchdowns, like I said, 710 yards. Um, you know, what's, what's been working for you in the O? Um, I mean, it's just senior year. I'm going out there and I'm having a good time. I'm already committed, so I got nothing to worry about with recruiting. I'm not worried about getting that film. I'm not really too worried about my stats. I'm more worried about winning games and having a good time doing it. And I think that, um, when you think about the game as just the game, it makes it so much easier to play. There's so much less stress, and you're able to perform. And so um, that's really just what I've been doing. Not really too focused on anything like the stats, but it is nice to be able to look down at the stat sheet and see some some nice stats. Yeah, and you guys are, you know, you guys will both be well acclimated with whoever's quarterback. I mean, you've had some, you've had some good ones since you've been there, you know from marco to miles now you got jack um and kind of just building off that hun making waves all throughout you know the football world we got Caden wallace you know taken uh taken by the patriots uh just talk about the legacy of hun and you know just players of recent you know of recent that have gone on to do good things and what you guys are hoping um to add to the program once you leave yeah, I think it has everything to do with the with the culture that we've been talking about. And, you know, I'm not worried about when this class leaves because um, everything that we've done and we've, you know, left our legacy and this I, I can see the cultures continuing, even with the young guys. Um, you know, we have a very strong 2026 class, so I'm not worried about anything as long as this culture stays the way it has. And, you know, they keep this brotherhood and this family and this center value of hard work. You know, that's what what's keeping on on top and what's keeping us really strong. Yeah, um, seeing all these Hun guys having success, like Caden Wallace getting drafted, um, Ryan Vandermark was in the league. Um, it puts a little pressure on us, but that's that's good. We like the pressure. Um, we know what we want to do. We want to go to college, um, have fun in college, play, and ultimately make it to the league. And um, having the pressure of other guys being able to do it, it's – uh, makes us need to rise to the occasion, and it's something that we're hoping to do. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to seeing both of you lace it up for Stanford. Um, and you know, hats off to both of you again. Just talk about what went into that decision to pick Stanford, and you know, what what you just love about the overall program. Um, I would say one of the biggest things that's always emphasized by my parents and I've always thought is academics are the most important thing. And I mean, when looking at Stanford, that's perfect mix of uh, excellence in academics and athletics. Um, and then when I first met the coaching staff, I loved them from the start. The receivers coach and the head coach, Coach Taylor and Coach Osborne, they were together at Sac State and just got hired last year. Um, and they were really trying to turn the program around. And, um, I mean, that's they've just been great to me in the recruiting process. They always call me, check on me. Um, and they made me feel like they wanted me to come, like they wanted me there more than any other of the other schools that were recruiting me. And I think that was most most impactful to me, being able to have coaches that I know want me there and I know can help me succeed. Yeah, for me, I mean, my recruiting process was a little confusing. I didn't really know what I wanted at first, but when I took that OV to Stanford, you know, I grew up, my parents always preach academics as well. And, you know, I fell in love with the campus, fell in love with, you know, the people there, um, everything about it just seemed perfect for me. And then aside from just the academics and stuff, um, Coach K, who's the D-line coach, he came from Wisconsin. And he also had, um, you know, previous experience in strength coaching. So, I mean, he's really just my guy. I kind of clicked with him pretty uh pretty instantly and then you know they need guys to come in and play a d line so i mean that's really exciting for me to try to get on the field because i want to go to college and play football i want to go to college and sit behind guys yeah another thing is they were one of the top 
um, schools in playing true freshmen and redshirt freshmen last year, and they've continued to do it this year. They already have a, they already have a true, uh, true freshman All-American, midseason true freshman All-American. Um, and so the fact that they have proof that you will play as a freshman is it's great for recruiting because it tells us that if we're ready for it, we know that we'll have the opportunities to play. Yeah, and one freshman in in particular, um, you know, hard hard to not mention him. The, this kid, he's still killing it. Usually, you would expect a drop off, but you know, Michael Ford, you're gonna be joining him soon. But what's it been like to watch his career so far at Stanford, and uh, what are you looking forward to uh, most when when um, getting there? I've the actually, guys? I've never actually met him in person or talked to him, but um, I was certainly shocked i mean he's having an incredible year and hats off to him i mean i'm sure he's working super hard um they've got a lot of talent in the running back room so for him to be able to earn that starting job week one um it's really incredible and the success that he's been able to have i mean it's something that i look up to and hope to be able to do yeah i mean i remember in summer i was in, on a facetime watching the practice and they told me, they're like, yeah, Mike is probably going to be our guy, our number one running back. And I was just so surprised. And then I saw him on the field just absolutely dominating. And I'm just, you know, I'm so happy. Just another guy from Jersey going across the country and balling out. For sure, for sure. And he's a champ uh, through and through. You got some other Jersey guys going with you. As I mentioned, Omari Gaines. Um, tell me, have you been in contact with all these guys? And, you know, what's – you know, is there, is there a little Jersey camaraderie heading, heading over there? Yeah, for sure. Um, we were on the official visit with Omari, um, got to meet him and connect with him. We also have a group chat for all our commits. So we've been in contact with all of them and it's, everyone's having great years. Um, so we're just super excited to get in the program with them and be teammates with them. Yeah, no, yeah, same thing. I was uh, on the OV as well, and then I got to see Omari. We were at the SJR versus St. Francis game getting a little scouting going, and uh, we saw him on the sideline, said what up to him. But, yeah, we got the group chat going, and uh, I think this is a really strong class, so I'm really happy for the future of Stanford. Awesome, man, awesome. I can't wait to be, uh, you know, staying up late to watch those, but it'll be in, you know, be for good for good reason. Got to support my guys. Um, I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. Uh, I know you need your rest, but you got a big one this week. St. Francis of Maryland. When I talk about big dogs, they really don't get that much bigger. What's the vibes like in practice this week? And, uh, yeah, how are you going to take it to them? I mean, we've had this game circled on our calendar since we scheduled it. This is the game. This is, this is our Super Bowl. We don't have playoffs, so this is our time to prove to the country what we're all about. And um, it starts with practice. Practice today was our first practice of the week. And the energy was super high. Guys are super excited to fly around and be able to prove ourselves. It's also our first home game. We've had six straightaway games. Um, so to be able to have our first home game late in the season, um, it should be, should be a special day. I'm excited for it. Yeah, being our first home game and all that, I think guys were pretty excited today. They were buzzing a little bit, made a couple mistakes just because we were too high energy. Uh, we just got to slow it down a little bit maybe, uh, work through some things. But I really liked how today was, and I'm really excited for this game. What's something that Coach Smith is really stressing to you guys, and what do you think it's going to take for the Raiders to pull this one out? Um, I think it's really just the brotherhood and playing as a team. I mean, when you see all these national teams – these um, national powerhouses like St. Francis, it's a collective group of 30 dudes who are insanely good athletes and they come together. And it's sort of the problem that you get with an all-star team. Sometimes it's hard to bring 30 players uh, together and be a team. Um, so what we've really emphasized is playing as a team and doing your 111th each play um, because I would rather a team of 11 guys then 11 superstars running around the field doing their own thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Aside from the, uh, you know, the brotherhood and the family and all that, you know, Coach Smith made sure he talked to the offensive line, defensive line today, telling us, you know, this game is really on our shoulders because it's really whoever owns the line of scrimmage is going to come out with that victory. So just being physical, being hard, and just, you know, letting them know what we're about. 
Love it. Love it. And I'm going to have to be there to support you guys. Um, that's listen, this is probably the biggest game this program is scheduled in the last like 10 years. So um, it's trust me, you're going to be getting you are be getting fans you probably never even seen there before. But I, I just buzzing around New Jersey high school football fans. Very, very excited for this matchup. Guys, before you go. Uh, do you have any parting words and what do people need to know about the Raiders in 2024? Um, I mean, this is our, this is our last year. This is our time to leave a legacy. Um, I think that Hunt is a school that flies under the radar on the, the national radar. We never get too much attention, even within the state of Jersey. I don't think we get too much respect, um, but this is our year to prove that we're really about it and we can beat all these powerhouses. So, I mean, this is our, we've already done our part in proving that we can beat some of these national teams. And with the St. Francis game ahead, it's time to prove that we can beat one of the top 20 teams in the country. Yeah, I just want all my teammates to know, you know, I'm playing for them. It's, you know, the rankings are cool and stuff, but what really matters is just winning and playing for each other. So, you know. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I also want to give a shout-out to Coach Tony Rassiope. You don't think I forgot about my Rome brother. That's my guy right there. Um, guys, good luck this week. Um, can't wait to see you out there, and I know you're going to kill it. Thank you. Appreciate you having us. Can't wait to see you there. For sure. I'm hoping to see some fresh cookies from both of you. So, <laughs> All right. Let's put yes, on. Sir. I appreciate all those guys stopping by this week. We won't spend too long on the matchups, but let's just jump right into it. Thursday night, shout out to both of these teams for starting out undefeated so far. Burlington Township and Hopewell Valley, the Falcons under new leadership in longtime Willingboro coach Stephen Everett. I know both fan bases are rocking. I know Hopewell Valley is the Bulldogs lost two games last year and were excluded from the playoffs. Right now, the way they're playing, they're looking like they're going to get a high seed in Group 3. But possibly the biggest matchup of the weekend going down on Thursday night. Red Bank Catholic, Rumson Fairhaven. If you're from Monmouth County, you're a short conference football fan, you know that both these teams have had this one circle for some time. I saw Red Bank Catholic earlier in the year when they got beat by Bosco by 40+. plus. I think the Caseys are playing a lot better right now. But they're going up against a very talented Rumson Fairhaven team. We just had quarterback Owen O'Toole on the show not too long ago. He just eclipsed 5,000 yards passing. Both these teams took it to Marlboro. But you can throw out all the previous matchups and things of that nature when these two meet under the lights on Thursday. I'm going to go Red Bank Catholic, but by no means is this not going to be a close game. And jumping ahead to Friday, it's about to get preppy up in here as Petty taking on Lawrenceville. Former Millville quarterback Jacob Zamont leading Big Red to a 2-2 two two record so far this year. I expect them to pick up the win over Petty, but the big prep matchup on Friday, St. Francis of Maryland coming up to face my guys from Hun. As you just heard, the Raiders playing a national schedule this year. St. Francis is a powerhouse year in and year out, but I'm rolling with my guys, and I think they're going to put on for NJ. My guys from Phillipsburg looking for another big win under the lights as they take on St. Joseph Metuchen. And then, of course, the game on Friday night that you want to be at, St. Joseph Montville at Don Bosco Prep. The Ironmen coming off a tough one-point loss to DePaul. I think they'll be fired up. Give me Bosco in this one. Moving along to Saturday, the big one everyone's going to have scheduled is Paramus Catholic at Bergen Catholic. Obviously, the Crusaders favored in this one. But PC, the way they're playing this year, I don't think it's going to be an easy task for Bergen. I feel like it's always a close one when these two get together, and I expect Coach Greg Russo to have his guys fired up. I'm still going to take Bergen, but I'm telling you, could be a potential thriller. And then if you caught our earlier highlights with Pope John, the Lions, the one-win record does not reflect their season. They've put together an incredibly tough schedule, but can they get the job done and squeak out a win over Seton Hall Prep? I think so. I also think it's going to be a great one over at Kelly Athletic Complex. I'm going to go with the Pirates in this one, though. All right, well, that's going to do it for a short show this week. Appreciate you rocking out with us. It's week six. We only get so many cracks at this, so I appreciate you stopping by. Let us know what you thought of today's show, where you're heading this weekend. 
wherever you're heading this weekend, please be safe. Like and subscribe. For NJ Athletics, I'm Neri Rodriguez.